Greetings and welcome to the D3 Media Podcast. I'm your host, Danny Benson, and I'm joined by my co-host, Joseph Thomas. Uh, This is my first podcast, and we're just going to keep it on YouTube for now, and we're just going to kind of see how this goes. So, uh, Joseph, thanks for joining me. Glad to be here. How's it going? It's going good now that we've figured this out. Um... So today on this podcast, we're going to be talking about, is Marvel too funny? And when we talk about that, we're going to be talking about the uh, MCU movies. Uh, We're also going to be talking about the positive reception that the Wonder Woman movie has been getting by critics and early screeners. And the recent news that Tom Hardy has been cast as Venom in the new Venom movie. And Joseph had something Star Wars related that he wanted to talk about at the end of the podcast. All right, sounds good. Let's get started. All right. So, first off, let's start off with the first topic. Has Marvel, the MCU movies, become a little bit too funny? And has like their humor started getting in the way of things a little bit? Uh, I actually... I I completely agree with that actually because that is a problem I've brought up, especially after watching uh, Civil War. Uh, I thought I honestly expected a darker film based on what I saw in trailers and teasers and things like that. And not that I didn't think the movie was good, I thought it was a great movie, but I do felt I do I did feel like them trying to throw the comedy in there and everything. Made it made it feel too lighthearted and not. I'm trying to figure out the right way to put it. it. Just it didn't feel as heavy as I wanted it to feel. You know what I mean? Yeah, it feels like the comedy with that movie wasn't very well paced because the beginning of the movie was like really almost depressing. You know, Peggy Carter died and all that, and then the middle of the movie, they started getting a little bit more quippy. And then at the end of the movie, they straight up reveal that the winter soldier killed Stark's parents. And then they just got really heavy, really fast. Yeah. Like that, like the stuff at the end is what I expected is the type of uh, tone I expected to see throughout the film. But then when this, when they wanted to go through the, go through, they wanted to go through the motions and introduce Spider-Man and everything, and then they threw in all the jokes with the airport scene. Yeah. Everyone, most people love the airport scene. Like, it was great and everything, but I just, like, it didn't, with, because of all the comedy and the joking around and the one-liners, all the characters were throwing it at each other. It yeah. just made it seem kind of just, uh, like, not, like, there were, the, the stakes didn't seem like they were there for me. Yeah. To the credit, though, the right characters, I think, were making the right jokes, like Ant-Man and Spider-Man, and the other characters were kept more serious. Yeah. But when I say that is Marvel getting too funny, I'm mainly pointing at Age of Ultron. (laughs) Age of Ultron. It's actually been a while since I've seen Age of Ultron. I think I've always seen... I think I've only watched it two times. I've only I haven't seen it since I reviewed it on this channel. Yeah, it's been a it's been a while since I've seen it. I, but, but, but from what I remember, I remember one complaint was Ultron being making cheap one liners and and jokes. Am I wrong? I yeah, that was that was one of them. I didn't feel that like. Ultron definitely made too many jokes at some points, but he did actually have some good one-liners that I thought matched his view of everything. And yeah. James Spader's voice kind of made up for a lot of that, I think. Because <laughs> his voice was terrifying. Yeah. And, like, I, I mean, I understand it's comic book movies, you're going to have your humor in there, but just, I feel like when it... You need to find your balance because I feel like that's the struggle they're having. Like, it's like you said, Civil War starts off dark, and then it goes, it gets much more lighthearted with the comedy in the middle, and then it goes super dark again. I just, I just feel like there's not the balance isn't there. 
Yeah. It, 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 yeah, Age, Age of Ultron had... Age of Ultron kind of had the same, same problem from what and I remember. To me, Age of Ultron had it the worst because I feel like the humor really ruined what should have been a great movie. Yeah. Like, like Age of Ultron looked really dark. Like I thought it was going to be like Empire Strikes Back, you know? That's the way it was marketed for sure. Oh, yeah. The, the, okay. To its credit, amazing trailer. I'll still watch that trailer. Oh, the trailer was great. I remember yeah. it had the, the whole no strings score with it. Yeah, and then Ultron like saying his quotes and everything. But yeah. that's what I'm really hoping in an Infinity War that since the Russos are directing it, you know, it's going to be darker and grittier that they yeah. bring back Ultron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and I think Marvel knows what movies should be comedy and what shouldn't be. Mm-hmm. And I feel like Mainly Josh Whedon, maybe, and to the guy's credit, he was under tremendous amount of pressure with Age of Ultron. You know, he had yeah. to set up Civil War, Ragnarok, and all this other stuff. But I feel like because of, there was so much pressure on him, that some of the dialogue kind of suffered, and that's why, like, you know, Iron Man was just constant one-liners. There's that really stupid romance and then there was a uh, there was some really inappropriate jokes for that movie i felt that was like damn yeah you never really know what you're gonna get with just Whedon because he's he's extremely talented we all know that oh yeah like with all the television series made and the first avengers which was fantastic yeah with every avengers you could get something like alien resurrection or yeah oh yeah that's or... right he wrote alien resurrection yeah, like I was like, he has his hits, his misses. So I'm not saying Age of Ultron was it wasn't a disaster by any means. It was like it wasn't. No. it wasn't. It wasn't bad. It, it it had issues though. It was like it was it was a, a bit of a drop off from the first Avengers. Yeah, and I feel like because if you watch, I recently rewatched the first Iron Man movie and the Incredible Hulk. Uh, two of my favorite MCU movies. The first Iron Man movie is just still amazing. Oh, the first Iron Man's great. That's one I, I I've watched the first Iron Man probably almost I think probably the most of any MCU movie. Yeah, for me that's the Incredible Hulk. I've watched that movie so much, but there's humor in it definitely, but it has a considerably dark tone, and it's pretty obvious when Disney took over Marvel. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a big fan of Robert Downey Jr. Not just as Iron Man, but just as an actor in general. Mm-hmm. And I, in the first Iron Man, I thought he was. That, I thought that's when he was at his best personally. So yeah, he just uh, that the first Iron Man. He oh was yeah, just per, he was, he was perfect. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, the Avengers came out, and I remember it really sticking out to me. You know, I love the movie. Um, I didn't drink the Kool-Aid and say that it was the greatest superhero movie ever made. That's definitely in the top three. I say it's Avengers, The Dark Knight, and Superman the movie. But Mm -hmm. I noticed how much the humor jumped out at me. And it was cool for that movie because, you know, the big triumphant. You want to have a great time with seeing these characters together. But I feel like after... uh, After that, every movie tried to be the Avengers with the exception of the Winter Soldier, which was the reason the Winter Soldier was so good. Yeah, the Winter Winter Soldier came across as more of a drama than anything else, and that's what I liked about it. And that's what I expected to see out of Civil War, and I didn't quite get that, which is why I was somewhat disappointed with it in the end. Yeah. I'm looking back at Civil War, though, I'm glad that they didn't kill off Captain America because then they probably would have just brought him back in Infinity War. So I would rather them kill him off at the end of maybe Avengers 4 to, f- to finish off the Civil War story arc and then maybe give Bucky his own Captain America movies mm-hmm. and then give it a long a long time before he comes back. Yeah, I don't think killing him off would have been necessary. Like, like you could have made the movie... You could have given the movie the dark, serious tone without having to kill him off. Yeah. It was... 
I actually thought that Quicksilver's death should have been saved for Civil War because then what you could have done is have that have like a split between Wanda, the Scarlet Witch, and Quicksilver, the brother and sister. Like one joins one side, the other joins the other. Yeah. And then have uh, Quicksilver get killed in Civil War. But it's obvious because Fox is so stingy with their characters that they really didn't want him in the movies at all. I mean, they couldn't even say mutant in the movie. True. <laughs> which is sad. But uh, Guardians of the Galaxy and Ant-Man, I felt they nailed the tones on because they they did have some good drama at some points in those movies, but there's no way you're going to make a serious, dark, gritty superhero movie off of those characters. Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, I had almost zero enthusiasm to see uh, Ant-Man originally when they came out. Oh, neither I, did I. I don't. I get. I can't remember who I went and saw it with, but I went. But I. I remember going to see it. I was. Just, I expected nothing. I thought it was gonna. I thought it was just gonna be a flop. Yeah. And and then I walked out thinking. I. I remember thinking the movie did did not take itself too seriously, which is because there's no way you can with that yeah. kind of plot. And it and it did it right. It made it. It made it its own the kind of action adventure comedy and emphasis on the comedy more than trying to t- take itself too seriously with its narrative. But you also and, had great characters though, like with uh, yeah. Michael Douglas and everything. It was just no, like, was, I, I was surprised. Yeah. Um, I'm blanking on the main, main character's name for Ant-Man. Um, Paul Rudd. Yeah. Paul Rudd. Yeah. He, he, he was very impressive in that movie. He's, I thought he, I thought he, it, it, comedically I thought he was I thought he was great. Yeah. Um Guardians of the Galaxy, I I had no interest in seeing that. That's why I waited till just recently to see the the original movie so I can review it. And I was again impressed because again, you're not going to make a serious movie with the main characters being a talking raccoon and a talking tree. (laughs) And I I hope DC takes some notes on that and doesn't take movies like Aquaman or the flash too seriously. I feel like that should be a little bit more of their more lighthearted characters, including Superman. So hopefully they take a little notes on that. They don't have to be comedy, but they should not take it so seriously. Yeah, I, I, I honestly have been thinking about. I need to watch Guardians of the Galaxy again because the the original one because I I haven't got that into those movies, but I want to give them another chance before I go see the second one. Yeah. So I'm thinking. So I think I'm gonna rewatch the first one and see how yeah. I like it because everyone always wants to talk about how the the comedy is great and the characters are the characters are fun and. I don't know. For some reason, I didn't. I I just didn't have a lot of interest in the movie in general. But there is some surprisingly gonna... a lot of drama in that movie. Yeah, I, yeah. Because I, I I haven't watched it a couple. I think I watched it when it first came out. So it's so that's yeah. been like two years. So I'm gonna give it another chance and we watch the first one, and, and then we'll go into checking out the second one. Hopefully, it. From what I've heard, it's not quite as good as the original, but it's definitely worthy a worthy sequel. Yeah. It's hard because everybody's going to be comparing everything to Captain America the Winter Soldier, which is the only Marvel sequel that has really bit, just blew the first one out of the water. Yeah. I mean, I like the first Captain America as well, but yeah, Winter Soldier was a huge step up. Yeah. And then it's, it's, you... I, I see Civil War on the same level as Winter Soldier, that they're both just as good, but in their own ways. You know, like, it was nice because Winter Soldier felt like it was on its own. It was yeah. its own thing, and that's something that I miss in superhero movies. Yeah, yeah it makes me think about what Sony is doing with Venom. Oh, we're going to get to that. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I was so excited until I realized that it's not going to be in the MCU. 
That just it doesn't that doesn't make any sense to me. I don't understand why you would constrict yourself like that. Uh, rumor has it that Tom Holland already uh, talked to Feige and all them that about doing like nine movies or something like that, doing like three trilogies. See, like I don't like it. When I, I don't like when studios do that. Like, don't plan nine movies when you have yet to make one. Well, he was. I think he was just saying that, and I I totally agree with you. But I think he was saying that because he says he wants to cover Spider Man in high school and then in college and then as an adult. And plus, he's got so many villains that you know. Yeah, like I understand that, but and then but then I was also referring to like uh, what Power Rangers did when they said, "Oh, we're gonna make seven movies." I'm like, okay, you just came out with the first one. Let's start oh, yeah. talking about a sequel, baby. Why are we talking about seven? Yeah, they're already. I like Ridley that, Scott's already writing the next Alien movie. They're already like, got all the Star Wars movies planned out. It's just uh, yeah, the way they're doing like, things now. Yeah, I'm like that. It, movies don't just happen, okay? Let's focus. On, let's go on a movie to movie basis and focus on making the best movie possible right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but. As far as Marvel being too funny, I feel like it's nice because the MCU has a lot of variety. You have the really dark, gritty Street Justice in the Netflix series. You got yeah. a little bit more of the spy, kind of light-hearted, but also can be very serious. Oh, yeah. For, uh, yeah it's, Agents it's, of it's, S.H.I.E.L.D. And then the movies, you know, fun, but... I would like to see them go back to more of that phase one feel where they're a little bit more serious. And it looks like the Russo brothers are starting to take it back to that. Yeah. So. Uh, any other thoughts on that? Uh, yeah. Um, I, I definitely, I, I definitely feel like if I think if any award, infinity Ward, I think that's going to be that. I feel like it's going to be more serious than even Civil War was. Mm -hmm. Is was the feeling I get. I don't and think. I wonder that... how the Black Black Panther movie is going to go as well. Oh, I I think that's going to be great. Like I'm really isn't for is Force Whitaker in that? Force Whitaker? Um, I'm not. Sure. Uh, I'm not. I haven't read anything about him. I, th I thought he was, but any either way, I'm really excited for that movie. Yeah, I, I love Chadwick Bosman as playing. Yeah, uh, Black Panther. I think he's terrific. Mhm. Mm and Spider-Man: Homecoming looks really good too. I'm excited for that. Yeah. Uh. What was I going to say? Oh, I don't think anybody who hasn't died in the comics at some point is going to die in Infinity War. So, I don't think that Iron Man's going to die. I could see. Vision's probably going to die because he's going to get the Infinity Stone ripped out of his head. And I feel yeah. like Cap will probably be killed off in Avengers 4, maybe assassinated by Crossbones, who's been like resurrected by Thanos or something. Yeah, I feel like the Captain America death could come at some point in the fu near future because I keep hearing all the, all the things about Chris Evans. Possibly. Like, they keep asking him like, how much longer are you going to be keep doing Captain America, the Captain America character, and if and if his time is coming to an end, and it just makes me, and it just makes me wonder if yeah. they're getting close to that point where his character is going to get killed off. He said that he wants to renew his contract, because he does enjoy playing him a lot, but that's probably because, I feel like what they should do, and probably what they're going for, is they're just going to give, like, everybody from the current movies a break and just focus on spider-man i guardians of the galaxy is going to have a rotating roster and so is the avengers and feige even said the other day that his long-term goal is to get uh is to do a movie cro movie tv crossover with daredevil and everything so spider-man is probably the key to that you know daredevil and spider-man that would be amazing yeah and by the way forrest whitaker did join black panther's cast he did? Okay. I'm excited now. I love Fortis Whitaker. Yeah, so do I. Hopefully we get a little bit better performance than we did in Rogue One. But Yeah, Rogue One. That, that's not even on him. That's, that's not, that has nothing to do with him. Yeah, it was just 
they kind of gave him weird lines. Yeah. I, I enjoyed him, though, in that movie. But, yeah, it was kind of silly. Yeah. Um, but then, uh, yeah, Feige said that he wants to do a movie TV crossover eventually and that the long-term goal is to, you know, get the Fantastic Four and X-Men back even though there's no plans of what they're going to do right now. He said that's the long-term goal. So yeah. if they do this like James Bond and maybe just keep ro- rotating out the actors, I'd be fine with that. I mean, there's so oh, many yeah. comic stories to do. Yeah. I think that'd be, I think that's the way to do it. Same. Yeah. Although I, I have grown attached to who's playing these characters. So it would be sad to see them go. Yeah. It's, but yeah. I mean, like especially like characters like Iron Man and Captain America. I mean, these are the only portrayals I've ever seen. Oh yeah. Of these characters. That's so the same thing be... with Wolverine. Yeah. So, I guess we could move on to the next topic. Moving on, we're gonna go to the positive reception of the Wonder Woman movie, which is great news and gets me really, really excited for that. Yeah, I've, I've I've been hearing good things. We're about well, we're only a couple of weeks out from the Wonder Woman release. It comes out June second, I believe. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I've been hearing good things about it, and um, I've been watching a lot. I, I watch a lot of interviews on the uh, from a Collider Movie Talk, and they believe it's going to be the first uh, DC Cinematic Universe film that will not be so divided on divided critically they believe it will not only be praised by fans but also critically acclaimed which is what dc has been lacking lately because they have they definitely have their fans of their films but critically annoying as they they are yeah critically they have not been praised no suicide squad batman v superman neither of those received high high reviews overall I remember Suicide Squad, I felt, got too much hate. It wasn't a good movie, but it was definitely entertaining to the point where I'd, I'd probably watch it again. But I I, it I got way it, too much hate for the I critics. Said, it, was, yeah, it was definitely an entertaining movie. It was a hard movie to judge because I felt like it was, another, it was another movie that didn't take itself that serious. So I didn't really feel like I should take it that serious. Yeah. See... Like, Marvel's nailed this thing where it doesn't take itself too seriously, but at the same time, it takes the characters seriously, so you care. Yeah. And Suicide Squad was so close to doing that, but it just fell short. Yeah, my like no one, no like the only big negative I have with Suicide Squad was just how messy it felt with the music yeah. montages. It just felt like a music video. It just. It, just, I, apparently, it was all over the place. Apparently, that's what the studio wanted. Uh, don't quote me. This is just a rumor that I've heard that the studio said, we really like the way you guys edited these trailers, like music videos. Make the whole movie like that. I mean, if that's what they're going for, sure. But, I mean, th- even if that's what they wanted, I don't know how well it translates to a film. But, yeah, it I don't doesn't. know. Um. But if Wonder Woman's great, like th- I'm, I'm so excited because like Ben Affleck did say since he kind of took a lot of creative control over there that this is gonna be like the rebirth of the DC universe, which the rebirth comics have been great. Uh, hell, we'll talk about that a little bit after we get done with Wonder Woman. But um, I heard the critics said that like it's a beautiful looking movie. It's not ugly and dark looking. It's like a lot of beautiful colors great action and you know good acting i've only heard there's i heard there's only like one negative review saying that it was choppy and like just like man of steel but the rest of the the critics are saying that it's great it's spectacular so yeah i i'm ready i'm excited i i've been waiting for a good dc movie since the dark knight rises yeah i'm i'm excited to see uh gal gal gadot and She's so hot. <laughs> sure. Do you think that we will get a Linda Carter cameo? Um, I mean, I, I feel like it's, yeah, it's definitely possible. I, I mean, as long as it makes sense in the movie, I wouldn't have a problem with it. Yeah. 
DC really needs to start taking advantage and doing some cameos. Like, why haven't we seen Adam West as, like, the Gotham City mayor or something? This something for fans to look at, and I feel like they really need to start taking advantage of that. Yeah. Yeah, but what I was saying about uh, Gal Gadot, I was like, uh, we have, we re- I mean, we got to see her in Batman v Superman, but we, like, we really haven't gotten to see her be full, full front. I, I want to see how she is as an actress, personally, because mm-hmm. I really don't know. Like, the only other film we've seen her in was that comedy with, um, with the other dude from The Hangover, I always forget his name. Zach Galifianakis. Uh, yeah, yeah, Zach Galifianakis. And that movie did not get good reviews. I actually saw, uh, I think, the first half of it. It was exactly what I expected it to be. It was just a mediocre comedy. So, so I didn't, and I didn't really pay attention to Gal Gadot's performance in that. Is that so the really one curious. where she was like a spy living next door with her husband? Yeah, it was almost like a playoff of a Mr. and Mrs. Smith kind of deal, but in yeah. reverse. Like, it was from the neighbor's perspective. That's and dumb. Yeah, it was. It was. I yeah. I did see her in the, the the Fast and Furious movies when I reviewed those. She was okay in there. She did really good as Wonder Woman, though. Just the movie just didn't give her anything to do with in Batman v Superman. Yeah, but yeah. From what I saw in the movie, it seems good. I just want to see her be a main character and mm-hmm. just see how she is overall. Because I'm I'm just I'm still pretty unfamiliar with what she's gonna be like. Yeah, I want to see, there's rumors that there's going to be a big fight with Ares, and that's like a, a big Wonder Woman villain, like a Greek mythology villain just like her, or, or a character just like her, so look, look her up if you, look him up if you haven't seen him yet, like, if he's in the movie, and they're describing it the way the rumors are, like, this is going to be amazing. <laughs> Another thing I'm much looking forward to, uh, the composer for Wonder Woman is uh, Rupert Gregson Williams, and uh, he actually did the uh, score for Hacksaw Ridge, which was one of my favorite soundtracks in years. Okay. So I'm actually really curious to see what he, what he does with this film. I, I heard that she's still going to have that kick-ass theme that popped up in Batman v Superman 2. That's I'm perfectly fine with that because I thought that was great. Yeah, we, that was like the only part in Batman v Superman. I was like, I'm watching a superhero movie. I was like, yes, when she came up. Yeah, I've been. I kind of want to rewatch Batman v Superman because it's been a while. I just want to see, just give it a second viewing. Also, Once I want to give it. I want to watch that extended cut that everyone talked about for a while. I. I watched it. I still the movie still doesn't do anything for me. It still doesn't impress me. It it didn't help like as much as people wanted it to. But mm-hmm. you know, I I I still want DC to do another Batman v Superman movie someday. Maybe just, you know, do uh I I would love to see them adapt the public enemy storyline where Luthor's president. He frames Superman for murder, and it's like a film noir uh, story with Batman and Superman trying to prove Superman's innocence. And Luthor puts a bounty out on Superman, so every villain, every hero, just comes out of the woodwork and tries to kill or bring in Batman and Superman while they're trying to figure this out. Like, there's an animated movie. I, I think I watched it with you and uh, Albert and. Yeah, it's a great story. The comic book's even better. Yeah, so yeah, sounds like it can be very interesting. It's like the Civil War of uh, DC, but done a lot better. Uh, how, what are your feelings about uh, Justice League? Are you getting a good feeling about that movie? Or Well... They started filming like three or four months after Batman v Superman was released. So yeah. hopefully they listened to the criticism. And, you know, they obviously listened to that they needed more humor because they gave us Aquaman surfing on the Batmobile, which looks so awesome. Yeah, I mean, it, like, it, it looks like it made some improvements over Batman v Superman just based. That's that's just me guessing based on what I've seen in the trailer. 
my only my only thing is it still it's it looks like your Zack Snyder film with a ton of CGI. Mm-hmm. And that's not always a negative because if if it's done well, it doesn't matter. I I just don't I don't want the the action. You don't want a prequel. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want the action to dictate my experience. I want I want good narrative. I want good characters. I want mm. all that. Just don't like don't try to awe me with special effects and action. Yeah. I want the Zack Snyder that made the Watchmen. Like, this could be his redemption. Yeah, Yeah, if it goes well, for sure. If if not, it's just further reason why (laughs) we need to move on. Yeah. Um, with With the Justice League, though, my theory is that there's a scene in the trailer that shows all the characters smiling. They look really happy and it's like really like light and like sunny behind them. I think that's when Superman's going to come back and then everything gets lighter. There's like, he's the ray of hope. They better just stroke Superman's ego in this movie for what they've done to him with Batman V Superman and just making him a, and Man of Steel just making him a clone of Batman and pretty much just really letting his character down in Batman v Superman with no fault to Cavill. He's a great choice, but the writing has just done him no favors. Yeah, you know, there's not much you can... Uh, yeah, that's the problem with a lot of these films. Is the, like, a lot of these... A lot of issues I have with these films has, really has nothing to do with the theatrics. It's, it's the execution of the of the writing. Mm-hmm. That's always seems like it's the main issue with with multiple DC movies. Yeah, but it looks like with Jeff Johns in control, he's written Rebirth, which uh, I'll talk about in a few minutes because they're leading to something with the DC Rebirth comics that made me really get into reading comic books on a monthly basis again because if they're doing what i think they're gonna do i really hope they do this in the movie someday it would be amazing yeah but with him in creative control ben affleck getting more creative control and seeing what a what a fan a lot of these people are and dc taking more creative control of their characters by making their own film division they're pretty much copying marvel which was the right thing to do I think we're going to get some better movies. And even Joss Whedon is going to be directing a Batgirl movie and writing it, I believe. So, and he can write female characters great. He did Buffy. Oh, yeah. Buffy the Vampire and then all of his characters in uh, Firefly. Yeah. I was like, like, if there's any movie I feel like Joss Whedon can do, it's definitely a Batgirl movie. Mm -hmm. And, uh, have you heard any news about um, the Batman solo film? Because that seems to have like disappeared over the past couple of months. Yeah, I haven't heard anything. I heard that it's there was a script that was written for it that had the Joker, it had Deathstroke, a lot of characters. I think Killer Croc too, which would have been amazing. But I heard that it's getting a rewrite, which is good. Like, don't I feel like. A lot of these scripts, we see, you know, the good movie poking through with these DC movies yeah. that they could have really benefited for a rewrite. So, you know, take take their time. I want a good Batman movie. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't think any, I think of all the movies, this movie's gone through the most of re, rehaul with mm-hmm. changing directors, changing scripts. Uh, if you're going to do all of that, don't rush. Take your time. Just give us a good. Just give us a good film. That's all I want. Yeah. I, I was. I, I was personally really looking forward to having to the idea of having Ben Affleck direct a Batman movie because I I enjoy Ben Affleck as an actor and a director. I think he's extremely talented. But if if it's not going to happen, then make sure you get the right director and use Ben Affleck in the right way as Batman because because I, I think he's terrific as Batman. He was the oh, best yes. part of Batman v Superman to me. He is my third favorite Batman. It goes Michael Keaton, then Kevin Conroy, who did all the, the Arkham games and the cartoons that we used to watch, and then uh, 
Ben Affleck. Yeah, he's that good. I think. He just, he just yeah. He, I I just remember a lot of people put were, put him under so much scrutiny when he was picked to be Batman. Oh, I know. I've always been I was I was I was I've always been a fan of Ben Affleck ever since the nineties. So yeah. I I know I know he's had his bad performances like we all know that. Mm-hmm. But I was but I was just like I didn't see him coming in to this bigger role and flopping. I I just didn't think it was gonna happen. And he definitely yeah. delivered. On his performance. So he was, was the best really... part of the movie. Yeah. And so with that, let's talk about Rebirth a little bit. But first, okay. let's go to a quick commercial break. Yes, we have commercials here. So we got a sneak product placement in somehow. So uh, we'll go to commercial right now and we will be back. Okay, we're back. So, um, let's talk about DC Rebirth real quick before we move on to our next topic. Um, DC Rebirth uh, was is the product of a failed DC reboot. I'll go into a little history right here. Uh, the New 52 was started in 2011, and it was said that the Flash went back in time, reset the timeline... And it pretty much erased all the superheroes' memories, made them all younger. It started back at the beginning. But the problem was is that they made a lot of unnecessary changes to characters. Um, Jim Lee, who is one of my favorite comic book artists, one of the best, was in charge of designing new costumes for everybody. Uh, They didn't come out all that great. I I like them, but I can see where a lot of fans wouldn't. And they changed a lot of things, but what they did that made it really confusing and defeated the whole purpose of this, which was to attract new readers, they decided that some of the best stories from the original universe that we grew up reading, the post-crisis universe, were still canon. Like uh, the deaths of Superman, the killing joke... All that, so they referenced that, and then when you get a new reader coming in, they're gonna still wonder, well, why does Batman? Why is he on like his fifth Robin? If you know nothing about it, you're not gonna know the whole story. Why are they referencing this other stuff that happened way before, in a supposedly another universe? So they really they wanted to, you know, have their cake and eat it too. They wanted to reboot but keep all the good stuff from the original universe even though this was a different continuity and it really it really failed them so they did rebirth which the original superman from post crisis comes back the new 52 one dies and all the superheroes remember who they were previously so they kind of what they did was took the best of the new 52 the best of the post crisis and melded them together and everyone was wondering okay why this happen but Batman and the Flash both discover the smiley face pin with the blood on it from Watchmen. And then now Jeff Johns, who's taken over as creative control for the DC movies, shared a picture on his Twitter and his Facebook of the Doomsday Clock from Watchmen. And it's almost to midnight and Superman's shield is at midnight. So, and he said that that's all coming together in November, so I'm really excited to see what's yeah. going to happen because the Watchmen weren't originally part of the DC continuity. Sounds like a very complicated situation they had going. That's comic books for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at some of these rebirth rebirth comics right now. They got yeah, they got the, they got a bunch of they got a bunch of different issues coming that came out in August. Mm-hmm. October, they got they got Deathstroke, The Flash, the Green Lantern, Green Lantern Rebirth number one. What they what they did that was smart was, you can go to Barnes and Noble and get the Rebirth book, and it's pretty much just a collection of all the beginning issues that gets you up to speed, 
and then you could just jump right in right now reading the comics monthly. So that's pretty much what I'm doing right now because yeah, I really want to know what they're going to do in November. Yeah, that'd be something useful for me because I'm not the most educated comic book comic yeah. book when it comes to comic books and all and all the, in the entire universe. So something like that would actually help me if I if I was in, if I want to get into checking out the new universe. Yeah, they're starting to organize, which is nice. Um, so that we'll see where this goes, and I would love for them to say in the DC extended universe movies that the Watchmen is canon. So. But, yeah, that would be great. So, any final thoughts on that? Uh, I, guess, I, I mean, it definitely sounds it. Don't miss, I'm looking at some of his comic books and the bat, the Batman, the Batman ones I'm seeing right now about that Beyond Rebirth that came out back in November mm-hmm. and all that. That actually looks like a really good comic. I want to check that out. Yeah. So I I'm really excited for Wonder Woman. I think it's I hope it's going to be great. I yeah. think it was a horribly marketed movie because they're projecting it to do about as well as Ant Man, which is sad for Wonder Woman. So yeah, that, that, that's that's I feel like that's a low ball for this kind of movie. Um, yeah, they really I mean, screwed it on marketing it. You got I feel like with this film I feel like. In turn, if I was gonna guess like a Rotten Tomato kind of score, mm-hmm. I would guess this movie's gonna rank somewhere probably in the high seventies. I give because, it probably eighty. Like I'm not, I'm not saying that has anything to do with how well the how how good or bad the film is gonna be. Yeah, it's just you're you're gonna have your haters that are just gonna nit, nit, nitpick at the movie because mm-hmm. of uh, DC's past with their films. Yeah. But I definitely think this is going to be for DC's first hit. You know what would be funny? Is if this movie's good, but all the DC fanboys that defended BVS and Man of Steel to, like, their death are going to hate this movie. Well, this movie's, this, this movie's marvelized. Like, it's not like marvelized, it's good. Like uh, I just can't wait to hear it. But so let's move on to our next topic, and that is Tom Hardy has been cast as Venom in the Venom movie. I was so excited until I remembered this isn't in the MCU. So, your thoughts? Uh, I mean, Tom. I mean, Tom Hardy. I mean, it's an interesting selection. It's not somebody I would have expected them to choose. It works. I think he can, so. it, no, it definitely works. I think he can do a terrific job. It's just I, I really don't know where they're gonna take this without including Batman. At I'm not sorry, not Batman, Spider Man, at all. Mm-hmm. Because Spider Man is a set, of all of all the Spider Man villains, Venom is a, having Spider Man in relation to Venom is huge. He, that is that, his alter ego. Yeah. Like uh, so, it's just like of all the villains to like separate from Spider-Man altogether, it doesn't make any sense to me. I hate to be sound negative, but I really want this movie to flop because you know Venom. Venom is my favorite, probably favorite comic book villain, and you can thank the the two thousand one Spider-Man game for that. I would actually agree with that. For the exact same reason, I loved Venom in that game. Yeah, dude, he had the best voice, and he was so funny. And that's... I always thought it was funny, because he sounded like my uncle when I was a little kid. My uncle had that kind of voice. I always thought that was hilarious. I just always thought Venom was just the coolest looking villain. Oh, yeah. I always thought Spider-Man was kind of a little bitch. But then to have Venom as his main villain was like, oh, man. And I hate the way they draw Venom in modern comics. He looks so ugly instead of cool the way he used to. Yeah. And say what you want about Spider-Man 3, and we all know Topher Grace, not a good choice to play Venom. Yeah. But when I got to, when I got to see Ven- when I got to see the quick glimpses of Venom 
in like in his in his full the full look of Venom they have in that movie, which they only you only get to see a few times, which kind of annoyed me. But when I got to see it, man, it did it look cool though? Oh yeah, that was that was that made the movie for me. Like that makes the movie worth skipping through. You know, hitting the skip button a lot, but. God, Venom at the end. We didn't get enough of him, but what we got, God, he looks so cool. Yeah, that like they had they had Venom be the one that kills Harry in the, in the mm-hmm. end of the film. And I, that was one thing I did like. It gave Venom that it gave Venom that significance in, in the story. Like I didn't mind what they what they did with Venom in the story. I just wish one the film had focused solely on Venom as a villain and instead of having the whole Sandman dynamic with him being Uncle Ben's killer and all that, yeah. which would have been fine. But I felt like that could have been its own film as well instead of mi- mix- mixing both of them together. Yeah, I-, I get that. What I think that they should have done with Venom, though, is that I think Marvel, they have the rights to all the characters. So if they wanted to in the MCU, which I'm pretty sure they will, they are going to introduce Venom. Uh, there's lots of rumors going around that Spider-Man's going to get the symbiote suit in Infinity War, which would make perfect sense. But, uh, I think what they should do, because Venom was an anti-hero in the comics for a while, and what I would do is have him get introduced in the Spider-Man movies, and then break off and get his own spin-off movies in the MCU. They could do the Maximum Carnage storyline and introduce Carnage and all that. The the possibilities are endless, but yeah, I just don't know why Sony's doing this cuz I feel like they're just going to lose money on this. And uh, okay, I, I I personally I understand if you want to make your uh Venom origin film and Spider-Man's not in it initially, mm-hmm. but and say that you don't plan even want them in the same universe I don't understand that logic I don't understand why you want to limit what you can do for the future like that it just doesn't make any sense to me to do that yeah and there was an interview with a producer from Sony who said they don't even know if they're going to let Spider-Man stick around in the MCU after the second sequel and not give him a third one at least that would be suicide Sony would never make any more money off the Spider-Man property ever again if they did that? Yeah, I, that would be. I'd be really surprised if that actually happened. Yeah. Like with, with all the marketing doing on Spider-Man, if they only kept him around for a short time after all this. Yeah, because when you think Marvel, like when you think Marvel, you think Spider-Man. That's yeah. that's the logo, pretty much, of the company. So, it. It just doesn't like the MCU felt really empty until he showed up. I, I, I'm like, I, said, I mean, yeah, as as successful as like characters like Captain America and Iron Man have been, it's not like, like as a child, like they were not the popular characters. No, like, not at like, all. It, it, it is the new universe of these films that, that have come out over the past decade that have made these characters popular to the general public. Yeah. So, anyway, Tom Hardy, that's a good choice for Eddie Brock, um, but I just, I'm not, I don't know how to feel about this movie. Like I said, Venom's my favorite comic book villain. He's one of the best, I think, until up until recent years in the comics. I think they kind of screwed the character up, but I... Yeah, I I just I'm indifferent to this. I I don't know. I'm not excited. I kind of want it to not make a lot. I don't want it to be bad, but I don't want it to make a lot of money. If that makes any yeah, sense. Yeah, I really don't know how what to feel about it. It's one of those kind of I just need to wait and see things. Yeah. I, um, I need to see the first the first set of advertising advertising and the trailer that comes out just to get some sense. Yeah. Of the direction they're going to take it, because right now I have no idea what they're going to do. I mean, I'm not sure g- they're, they're going to do the origin story, but is this supposed of, to be in the Garfield universe? I'm sorry, in what universe? The Andrew Garfield Spider-Man universe. I have not heard that. Huh? Because I know it's written by the same guy who's right who wrote uh, the Amazing Spider-Man Two, which was a 
great looking movie, not a very well written movie. Like it, it, it kind of sucked. Yeah. Um, you said it was the writer for the first Amazing Spider-Man. I don't think the first one, but I know he was the second one. Hmm. So, we'll see. Only time will tell yeah. with this. So yeah, I mean, Tom, I mean, having Tom Hardy get casted is promising, at least. So he would. Hopefully. I would have been so excited though if he was in the MCU though as Eddie Brock. It just it, it would have it just would have made so much sense. <laughs> I know. Um, you had a special topic that you wanted to share with us after we went over those. Uh, something Star Wars related, so you said you wanted to surprise me, so let's hear it. Okay, so I was reading I was reading movie news earlier this week, and uh, I believe it was on Tuesday, a story came out about uh, Star Wars Revenge of the Sith, and a original plot point that could have improved the ending to Revenge of the Sith remarkably. Uh, this was regarding uh, Padme's character, and uh, we all know one of the biggest issues everyone has with Padme is the way she dies and the way her character was extremely watered down after between episodes two and three. Because in two, she's very poignant and she's she's very independent. She likes to fight. And in three, she's just kind of... She's, she's looked at as a, as a weaker character and that disappointed a lot of people. And the original story that came out is... In the initial draft of Star Wars Episode Three, it featured uh, Padme actually going after Anakin with the intent to kill him on Mustafar. Hmm. And and this is due to the fact that throughout the film, Padme was actually the one that was creating the rebe- the rebellion. Yes, there was a subplot I remember that got deleted, and the deleted scenes with her creating the rebellion. Yeah, and and throughout and throughout the film, you would have, you would have seen Padme noticing Anakin changing, and then her eventually coming to the conclusion that she needs to confront him about it. And there was actually a concept art that was released of her standing in front of Anakin, holding a knife on Mustafar. Wow. And and then and then in the end, she is unable to kill her husband. And then, not, and then, I, and then I believe Anakin. I believe they have Anakin actually kill her at that point. It's a much darker ending, but man, it would have been. It, it would have been such an improvement. Yeah. From what the, they what they put out there. That's interesting because I remember hearing something about that over the past week about there being another ending, but I never read anything into it. That's really interesting. Like. Wow. Because, yeah, she did kind of go out like a bitch. Yeah, yeah, with the dying of a broken heart kind of oh, situation. It's just so stupid. It, it just wouldn't be, it wouldn't made so much sense in relation to the original film. Like, having Padme be the uh, originator of the rebellion. I mean, just look, like, look at Leia, her daughter. Yeah, like, it, it would have made perfect sense. It, it just would've made, it would've made perfect sense. And, if, oh, I I want some uh, people on Collider who were reacting to this news, and they were honestly angered by the news because they were like they were angry that that they didn't go this route when they made the film because it would it just would have taken the prequels to that just another it's, level. Yeah. I, as much as I enjoy Episode Three, I think it's I think I think it's the only movie out of the prequels that I consider a good film. Yeah. That alone might have. I, if they had this plot point in there, I would honestly probably call it a great film at that point because it would have eliminated a lot of issues I had with it, mm-hmm. and it, and just improved the characters dramatically, in my opinion. I still I view episode three as it's it's a bad. I still think it's a bad movie, but there are such good things in it that it makes it worth watching. And the bad things that are in it feel like George Lucas just inserted them in there out of spite for people not liking them. Yeah. 
But... Yeah, I, it's like, yeah, I mean, we all, have, yeah, we all have our different opinions on on the on the prequels. I, I, I've been, one, I've always been one that actually, I really, I really enjoy watching the prequels. I mean, episode one and two, I'm perfectly, I'm, I'm, I bash on them as hard as anybody, but I, I still do enjoy watching them. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean. Man, talking about the prequels is so hard because there's so much. There's always so much to say about them. I know the episode one and two. Like every time I watch them, I forget about what they were even about right after. And that says something when you see a movie multiple times, <laughs> you can't remember anything about the movie other than the kick-ass Darth Maul fight at the end of the first one. But. Yeah, that's not that's not a problem. Like, because I am as big of a Star Wars nerd as you're gonna find, so I've seen the movies too many times to ever, ever forget what they're about. But yeah. I understand. I understand your point. The stories, especially in Episode Two, is very forgettable. Episode you Two, like, you have... I, I remember that plot. I cannot remember what the plot was about in Episode One to save my life. Like, if you held a gun to my head and said, "What was this movie about?" I would just be like, I don't know, pod racing, like Darth Maul, something. I don't know. Trade Federation. I mean, yeah. Like, other than the main point of them going to Tatooine and finding Anakin, most people probably couldn't tell you what the, what the rest of the subplots were. Yeah. And don't be one of those douchebags that's like, trying to say now that the new trilogy of what they're doing with Disney sucks and that we just weren't smart enough to get the prequels. Oh, I hate that. Stop it. Uh, I, I hate it. But I, I can't stand it when people want to come. I, I've, had, I've had people tell me that The Force Awakens was Disney-fied. Like, oh, they did... So I go, they disnified Star Wars. I'm like, what does that even mean? The, it, it, I, I was like, it felt the closest thing to what I felt in terms of characters. It, it felt the most like the original films of anything I've seen. Yeah. Isn't that a good thing? <laughs> like, I, Star Wars, like Star Wars is going to have its kind of corny moments. That's just how, that's what Star Wars is. Even the darkest Star Wars movies had its corny moments, so yeah. I it's a it's a BS argument when people say that. If you know, I can understand if you don't like the new Star Wars movies. I, I get it, but you know, for what they are, just be grateful that we're actually getting that Star Wars is being yeah, it's being ran into the ground for money, but. At the same time, it's nice to get some new Star Wars movies that are good and not like the prequels. Yeah. I feel like for all the people that did that have issues with The Force Awakens, I think I'm hoping The Last Jedi is what's going to sway them. I think it, I think it has the potential to to be one of the best Star Wars films we've seen to date. Yeah. If done, if done right, and I think Ryan Johnson is going to... I believe... I, I honestly have more confidence in him than I even have in, had in J.J. Abrams, yeah. if I'm being honest. And J.J. Abrams... Like, people were complaining about a lot of the repeat in Episode 7. J.J. Abrams tends to do that in some of his movies. Like, if you watch uh, the Star Trek movies, especially Into Darkness, there's a lot of repeat from previous movies yeah. and which it worked fine but just like in episode seven at the end it felt like they're just blatantly just copying the other movie and they did that in into darkness too so i feel like it'll be a lot different with a new director and i feel like it'll be a lot more original yeah i don't think i don't see the lost jedi being anything like we've seen it, from from uh, from the trailer that got released last month, it doesn't doesn't come across as anything we've seen before. Everyone everyone wants to say, oh, what if it's a retread of The Empire Strikes Back? I'm not worried about that just because it's a darker film. 
does not mean we're, we're going to see a retread of Empire. Because mm -hmm. when you think about it, the middle movie, the trilogy, of course it's going to be the darkest film. That's just kind of when things start to take a turn in, in, in a trilogy. That's just how things go. Yeah. Well, we're going on an hour here, so on that note, I think we should wrap it up. Uh, for now, we're like I said at the beginning, we're going to keep this on YouTube, but eventually, once we get all the bugs worked out and everything, I would like to start posting these to iTunes, so that way you people can listen to us rant and complain about things that don't matter, like most nerds do, instead of listening to things like politics and stuff like that that's actually important. Because they're not important. What matters is our opinion and nothing else. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's just nice to talk about things that don't really matter, but to us they do. And get just as heated as anybody talking on Fox News or CNN. Yes. Um... What are are you uh, still considering doing a basketball podcast on your channel? Uh, yeah, I actually am, especially with the NBA playoffs going on. I would like to at least attempt to, an episode to give that a little bit of a test run, especially once the finals get kicked off. Uh, I feel like there'll be a lot to talk about. I think. Yeah. As, there's no question we're going to be seeing the Golden State Warriors and the Cleveland Cavaliers in the NBA finals. <laughs> LeBron in, sucks. In Okay. <laughs> Before we go off on that debate, um, yeah, uh, let us know when you want to do that. I will be glad to join you on your podcast. Yeah. But uh, I think I like, for I'm, I'm still working out all the all the bugs. Yeah, I'm still I'm still just trying to figure out exactly how I'm going to do that. I'm looking at software to record through Skype and things like that as well. So. Once I get that figured out, I'll let you know. Okay. Well, guys, I want to thank you for spending an hour of your lives with us. Um, thank you for listening. Um, as always, if you like what you see, you can go ahead and hit subscribe. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The links are all in the description below. I also have the links to me and Joseph's social media account on the thumbnail. So be sure to check that out. And uh, be sure to check out Joseph's studio. Yeah, if you can follow me on YouTube, fa Facebook, or t or Twitter, uh, Twitter at, you can follow me at, at Joseph Thomas Four. YouTube, just search up Hoop Studios. If you're interested in basketball or film, I have both of them, and I provide content that I hope everyone will enjoy. And I appreciate you guys coming in and listening to us today. All right, Joseph. Well, thanks for watching, guys, and take care. I right, take care, guys.